course, this accessing Bitcoin in the palm of your hand, a new app from Abra, uh, you, allows users to buy and sell and hold 20 cryptocurrencies along with 50 uh, fiat currencies worldwide. The platform also lets users swap currencies for no deposit or exchange transaction fees. Joining us right now is the founder and CEO of Abra. He is Bill Barheit. Bill, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank Thanks you so much for me. joining us. So Abra has raised $40 million in funding That's so right. far. That's Tell right. us about the company, what you're going to do with that new money. Sure. Yeah, we've raised money from uh, Foxconn, the company that makes the iPhone, American Express, uh, Arbor Ventures, which is a, a fidelity-backed uh, venture capital fund. And we're using the money to deploy Abra globally. Why not use Bitcoin, raise Bitcoin? Well, when we started the company, <laughs> that's a really good, good question. question. We actually did have companies fund their investment Sorry. in Bitcoin. We did have a few. Okay. Uh, they actually sent us Bitcoin, and since we have to do our accounting in dollars, we had to sell the Bitcoin, of course. Okay. Okay. But they did fund in Bitcoin. <laughs> so you're fun. doing instantaneous no-fee exchanges across all these cryptocurrencies and fiat currencies. How in the world can you do that with all the yeah. volatility in these markets? Yeah. So, so app is a few things. Okay. When you look at the Abra app, it looks like a sim almost like a messaging app. It's that easy. It's just a portfolio, a list of cryptos, a list of fiats. You press the source. You press, this is what I want it to be, and the exchange happens. Now, behind the scenes, there's a whole bunch of magic happening. Abra runs a market-making operation, similar to what you would make markets in in stocks or other you know, assets, but in crypto, meaning we're integrated with all the exchanges around the world that facilitate now crypto-to-crypto -crypto trades, and we're making markets in this to figure out what is the spot price, why is the consumer paying this price, et cetera, et cetera. The app itself uses what we call Bitcoin smart contracts mm to hold the assets. It almost simulates what we would call an ETF in your world, like the stock world, mm -hmm. but now for cryptos. So that when you buy a gold ETF, you're not getting shipped the gold. If the gold goes up, you get dollars. If the gold goes down, you lose dollars. In the app, it uses Bitcoin smart contracts, which is this next gen tech. Bitcoin itself is programmable money. It uses that tech to give you investment exposure to all of those asset classes. Mm -hmm. But the consumer doesn't have to know that that's happening. Right, so it's got this kind of magical component to it that yeah. uses the Bitcoin tech itself to facilitate these investments. So do you hold Bitcoin then, or do you hold this stable coin? Yeah, so it depends which asset you're using in the app. If you're holding Bitcoin, you really are holding Bitcoin. If you're holding Litecoin, which is a derivative of Bitcoin, you're holding real Litecoin. In the case of the fiat currencies, when you put dollars in an Abra app, you are not holding dollars in a bank. Mm. You are actually holding Bitcoin, whose price has been pegged mm. to the dollar using very complex financial engineering. I was at Goldman like, 25 years ago and I had to go back and kind of relearn a lot of the financial engineering work I did and then reapply it to this next gen uh, cryptocurrency technology. So what are the most popular cryptocurrencies that are being used now or even fiat currencies on your app Yeah, yeah. and are, and are customers using it to actually buy yeah. products? So, so it's primarily an investment app today. You can actually send money to other Abra users globally so in that regard it's got kind of a global Venmo component to it but 95% of our users are buying cryptocurrencies holding them as investments. Uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ripple is very popular. Uh, Ether is really popular in our app. Uh, Ether is the currency, of course, for all the ICOs. And, and so as a result, that's Backed become... by the dollar. I, I, <laughs> I, I was really struck yeah. last week in my exclusive interview when I spoke with Peter Thiel, who, of course, co-founded PayPal and Palantir. Mm -hmm. And he, he said that he doesn't trust any of the other cryptocurrencies. He only trusts Bitcoin. It's the biggest. And he doesn't even believe in blockchain. Listen to what he said. My view is that there's going to be one uh, cryptocurrency that will be the equivalent of gold. And so the one, all else being equal, that you should bet on is the biggest one. So gold continues to be I gold see. because it's the main asset class. Most likely you'd bet on Bitcoin, and then there's some, and then the, the thing you have to think about is, is the product features, are they the ones that you really want in this alternate cryptocurrency? But, but you say there is support for the other cryptos. There is. Um, where I agree with Peter is is that uh, I'm not a big believer in this whole enterprise blockchain space. Uh, the, the blockchain exists explicitly to solve problems that created cryptocurrencies. So he and I are in complete agreement on that. However, uh, we love the competition 
that the other technologies create in the space. The biggest challenge with the Bitcoin technology is there's no central governance, right? Uh, Linus Torvalds, who created Linux, was kind of a benevolent dictator to decide how the open source project moved forward. We don't have that in the Bitcoin world. It's a decentralized movement. Mm. The community has to decide somehow how to move it forward. As a result, it moves forward really slowly, if sure. at all. Sure. The best way to deal with that is competition. So all of these new cryptocurrencies have a unique technology component to them that will ultimately help propel the entire industry forward in some way. And so that's why I'm extremely bullish on a lot of these other cryptocurrencies. On, on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. How many, though, of your customers or users are... They're not, they don't, uh, how many of them understand the technology and how many of them, to use a word that Peter Thiel used, are just betting on this? It's get rich quick. They want to be millionaires. And this seems like a really great, cool, newfangled lottery ticket for them. Yeah. So our users tend to be a little bit older, savvier investors. Like the average age for our users is actually in the 40s as opposed to a lot of the other kind of trading sites where the user age uh, excuse much uh, younger. Uh, you know, our take is is that uh, you know we don't really want the day trader in the app, mm. right? And and so we're really targeting this to the investor. But you'd be amazed since we launched the app last week with the 20 additional or the 18 additional cryptocurrencies to get to 20. We've gotten emails from people all over the world saying, "Why aren't you including this currency because it includes this fancy tech?" Or that I mean, probably 30 or 40 different currencies that we don't yet support. People are requesting with very explicit reasons why the tech is interesting to them. So the understanding of what's going on behind the scenes with the crypto tech compared to where we were like six mm. years ago. I gave the first TED talk on Bitcoin in 2011 when it was trading at a dollar. Wow. Okay. Nobody, did you buy it then? I did. I, no, I didn't have to. <laughs> Good for you. Didn't have to. I could mine it on a laptop then. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so at that point, nobody in the audience understood a word I was talking about. It was really fun. But now, I mean, the, the level of understanding that people have when I go to talk, they ask me questions that are amazing. They're sophisticated questions. But, yeah, there are still concerns about hacking, though. I mean, what about that? Well, you know, what, uh, we were talking all morning about what just went on with Uber yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and obviously self-driving cars and, and, yeah. and other situations. What about hacking? Well, here's the thing. So, so this is my background. I worked at Netscape. We designed the S and the HTTPS, the SSL, the connection. Okay, so my background is in security. We designed Abra to not hold funds centrally. If if you're using the online exchanges, it's one-stop shopping for hackers because all of the keys, all of the money is in a central place. With Abra, the keys for your crypto are on your phone. So if I have 100 million users, right, you have to hack 100 million phones in order to steal that crypto. And that's the way crypto was meant to be used. It's not meant to be stored in a central server. It's actually the opposite. It's meant to be stored like a bearer instrument, the way you would store cash in your pocket. So that's a misunderstanding. The, the exchanges themselves are not crypto. They're just databases, like SQL databases storing information, right? And we call that off-chain, meaning they're actually not using the Bitcoin blockchain when they do a transaction, hmm. right? With Abra, 100% of the transactions you're doing are taking place on a cryptocurrency blockchain which means they're totally secure, you're holding your keys, and if you hacked Abra's servers, you wouldn't be able to steal the consumer's funds because they're not there. Mm -hmm. So I noticed on your website that you can buy, you have an Amex, a section where you can buy cryptocurrencies on credit if you have an Amex card. That's Is right. that a responsible way to to buy Well, you get purchased. Uh, American Express is an investor, uh, yeah. so we did a direct merchant integration with them. Um, look, you get the purchase protection of American Express, right. uh, and we like that. The customers like that. Uh, the, the fraud rate is incredibly low on that. I think our ACH fraud rates are higher than our Amex fraud rates. Uh, they do a very good job in their systems. It has to get through their fraud system yeah. when you actually do the purchase in real time. Mm -hmm. And the consumer gets the protection. Um, the fee's a little bit higher, but that's set by American Express. We simply pass that on to the consumer. But what we find is, is that the consumer who wants to do a quick purchase, like immediately to get in when they're trying Abra, will use the card. And then when they want to buy more and then spread it out to the different cryptos, they'll simply wire money uh, into the app. Just okay. pay so, your credit card bill at the end of the month. That's all you got to do, right? So the credit card company is basically your bookie. There you go. That's right, yeah. There you go. With a little bit better vig, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> All right, we will leave it there. Bill, great to see you.